Do you ever wonder why you don't win in DFS but everybody else does? Well, it's because you're not following the correct rules. So let me help you figure out how to follow the correct rules because there are five things that you are not using in your daily fantasy sports lineups that will make a big difference and help you elevate your game and cash out. And stay tuned till the very end because that fifth rule is going to give you an advantage over 50% of the field, giving you almost an automatic chance to win money each and every week. The first mistake you're making is that you're screwing up at quarterback. You're going for the favorites in the game, and that's the issue because they are rostered at 2.6% more than the other quarterbacks. So take the favorites of the game, wipe them out of the way. Now, yes, there's gonna be a week where it works here and there, but wipe the favorites off your slate. You don't need them. And never roster a quarterback that's playing a team twice. It shows that the production dips, and you don't need that. What you wanna do is aim for a slight underdog. And when I say slight, I mean four, four, one, two, three, four, to six points as an underdog. That's it. You want somebody who's going to stay in the game. You don't want a heavy favorite with a 10, you know, 10 points. You don't want the underdog getting 10 points because those games, they never work. It's four to six points that's going to make the biggest difference in your quarterback position. Those players are going to be able to stay within the game, stay effectively within garbage time, get that passing defense that allows for prevent defense to happen to build up those yards and then put in those touchdowns. You'll see players like Kirk Cousins who effectively manage garbage time better than anybody else. And he is somebody that when he is behind, I always aim for. Sometimes you need to eat the chalk and you want to eat the chalk at the running back position. You either pay up for the running back or you find extreme value for low pricing. And here's the issue with running back. A lot of people look at a bunch of matchups. Stop. If they got a really bad matchup, don't even look at that running back. Take him off your slate. Instead, look at the running backs with a very easy matchup because you want to, you can eat the chalk here, face a great matchup, and remember, volume is king. Look again for a small underdog because in a GPP, a small underdog is going to have a chance and more passing opportunity. And if it's a small underdog with a pass-catching running back, that is crucial for your lineup and will elevate you in the rankings automatically. Rule number three is simple. Fade the hot wide receivers. Never pick a wide receiver who's playing a team for the second time because, again, just like the quarterback, their production dips. But fade the hot wide receiver. His roster ship is going to go up through the roof usually. This year in 2023, this Puka Nakua, he's just going to keep skyrocketing. So look for value elsewhere. Again, try to play the best matchups for you, but I'm again looking at the slate underdog. That's what you want. That's what you need. And look for a guy who is above six foot and above 215 pounds. Most of the time, they can bully ball, the, bully ball the defender and get you extra points. And if he's facing a rookie cornerback, that's good to go. Take it all day. There's like four tips in that last little clip right there that you need to do. So swing that recording back. Listen to it again because you want to face a rookie cornerback if possible. Get him at six foot tall, 215 pounds. Fade the hot wide receiver so that everybody else can have him. And if he fails, half of the lineups are dead already. And you're going to be golding at the wide receiver position. Tight end is simple. You don't have to worry about implied points to me. You don't have to worry about anything else because tight ends are usually boom bust and you need them to fall in the end zone. But what's the easiest way to figure out how to use the tight end? Look at the matchup. If the team is bad against tight ends specifically, not team defense, you have to go look at specific against tight ends. If they're bad against tight ends, play that guy because I guarantee you the NFL isn't stupid, my friends. They're going to use a tight end. And if it's a tight end that has any type of pass catching ability and he's playing a really bad team against the tight ends, that's fantasy gold. You stayed around till the final rule, which means you're gonna beat 50% of the lineups automatically with this. And here is the simple rule. It comes with defense. You don't always punt to the cheap guy. Instead, you take the highest roster ship defense, take them out of your lineup. You don't need them because you want that to not work because most of the lineups will die because most people will go to the favorite defense. Instead, you want to find a close game, one-point spread, three-point spreads. You want to pick the team that you think is going to be favorited in that game who's going to give up a moderate amount of points because that will keep the roster ship low. And then remember, if that same defense – can create sacks, can create pressures. Those two things create turnovers, and that's what creates points. Don't chase the highly rostered team. Don't chase the super cheap team. All I want you to do is to find the favorite in a game, in a close game, who gives up a tiny bit of moderate points and can create pressure, 
and I guarantee you they're going to get you more fantasy points for your daily fantasy sport lineup each and every week, allowing you to cash 